everyone who were complaining that the shadow of the earth tree did not give us any new details on the glomite queen y'all are kind of wrong there are many new clues in the game that reveal more about her identity her purpose and connection to other ancient creatures of the lands between the fate of the one who sounds the hanging bell will be guided by the stars the one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death I will leave here a tiny disclaimer. If you are a mainstream school of thought fundamentalist, if you detest heresy, blasphemy and niche theories, you might want to skip this video. For all of my recusant lore speculators, welcome, I hope you will enjoy today's report. Let me get one thing out of the way first. I do not believe that the Glomite Queen was a daughter of Merica. In my opinion, she was an Empyrean competitor to Queen Merica and lived in the eras predating the Golden Order. The Melina we see is burned and bodiless projection. There is even a clue in the main game suggesting the body does not necessarily correlate with the person inside, similar to Rani inhabiting a doll fashioned after her teacher. The Blade of Calling, being a weapon of the Kindling Maiden, its skill called the Blade of Gold, while the fighting style of its current wielder eerily reminding of the Black Knife Assassins, the people hired to slay a god. And just so you know, in my next video we will talk more about the Twin Bird and its symbolism connected to Melina and Rani. The last thing I'll say on the matter is that as a biological son of Merica, Mesmer had two other sisters, one bearing the rotten flame and another who burned her flesh to break the Empyrean chains. And there are plausible theories about Mesmer being a stolen child himself. So let's start with the name. Glowmite Queen. There is a new location on the map that can be directly linked to her. Caro's Hidden Grave. Caro is derived from Charon, the name of the ferryman of the dead in ancient Greek mythology. The name is most often explained as of keen gaze, referring either to fears flashing or feverish eyes, or to eyes of a bluish-gray color. The word may be a euphemism for death, says Wikipedia. The eye of the Glomite Queen that was carved out by Malekith upon her defeat quivers near tibia mariners and deathrite birds. Glomite Queen's power, the black flame she channels from the Godslayer sword, is similar to death flame used in the ancient death rites. One is used in sorceries, magic based on one's faith, another in incantations, a skill that requires high intelligence. One is used by those who bring death, and another by those who guide the dead. A keen detail is the color of the Glomite Queen's own flame. It's red, the color of destined death. As we know, the destined death was meant to find any living creature of the lands between before Merica decided to seal the rune of death and make her rule eternal. Who might have been the gods that the Glomite Queen's apostles were after if her rule predates Queen Merica's? The description of the ancient meteoritic or great sword tells us about the old gods whose arsenal consisted of the enormous meteoritic arrows. These gods are never fully described, but the long-abandoned civilization of the forges and their furnace deity were hinted to us in the main game on the robes of Glowmite Queen's servants. Now, what was the real starfall past of these lands? Another symbol connecting the godskin apostles and their queen to the new content is surely the fingerprint representing the black flame and Meteor's head. And this connection goes deeper than you might think. What you see on your screen is an example of Agate. However, for some reason, Agate gets commonly confused with Onyx. It is important to mention for today's theory. I am no mineralogist, but since this is the imagery we get on both English and Japanese Wikipedia for Onyx, and in most Google searches for the same mineral, we will use it as a reference, as I believe from soft designers would not go any further with their references either. The word onyx comes from the ancient Greek word for a fingernail. As the legend says, when goddess Aphrodite would cut her nails, they would turn into this mineral upon falling on earth. 
The description of nail stone tells us that these are the pieces of rock that came loose from the tips of the column-like stone fingers that grow at finger ruins. Ok, Nekipu, I hear you say. How does this all apply to the Glomite Queen? The only factual information we get about Melina's origin is that she was born at the roots of the earth tree, where she was given a purpose by her mother. However, deep root depths are not the only location we can visit that matches this description. The world that we get to know in the DLC is sealed by Queen Merica, but it is undoubtedly in the shadow of the earth tree, and at its very roots is the place where the mother of Finger resides. Of course, Melina does not seem to be one of the two fingers that Matthew gives birth to, but fingers are not the only form of life Matthew brought into the lands between. Onyx and alabaster lords came into being when the comet fell on these lands. Originally, we only had two possibilities what comets those could have been, the ones carrying Estelle-like creatures or the one that brought the Elden Beast. With the release of the DLC, we now have a third and most fitting option, the fallen star that carried the glorious daughter of the Greater Will. The origin of the word onyx being a meaningful symbol, these aliens came into being from the nails of the Mother of Fingers. The combination of onyx and alabaster as materials also aligns perfectly with the color palette of the Glomite Queen's Liege and the Divine Towers of the ancient civilization. Onyx is mentioned in Bible 11 times and is described as a stone adorning the ephod and the breastplate of the high priests. It is also mentioned as a part of the materials prepared for building the House of God. In the game, the meteoritic ore that can be found at the place of the impact of the falling stars and engraved into the circular release of the Divine Towers, hides inside of it rare purple stones. Purple are also the stones decorating God-skinned Apostles' robes and the rings of the Finger Creepers. The glow of the ore hints that it shares the same abilities as the gravitational magic used by the Lords, the Lampreys, the Finger Creepers and Meteor herself. The round decorations of the Divine Towers, possibly symbolizing the abyss from which the stars come down on the lands between, just like the headpiece of Count Emir that symbolizes the Greater Will's endless abyss where Matir originates from. A quick unhinged fact that might be worth considering is the original design for Affliction with Frenzy, which I recently discovered in a video about Elden Ring's 1.0 version made by Chopper. Not only details on god skins, finger creepers, gravitational magic are purple, but also the frenzy status was originally purple too, and this tiny detail makes Count Emir's remark about Mikola's roots being marred in madness a tiny bit more interesting for me. Speaking about Emir. His robe features a bunch of fingers that have rings on them, similar to grown-up finger creepers. And is it just my imagination or do they kinda look similar to the designs of Godskin Noble's gauntlets? Emir's own gloves also looking similar to the ones of Godskin Apostle, and the pattern on his robe reminds me not of the carrion ornament, but the lacy carvings of alabaster on the Divine Towers. And although I might be reaching with these connections, I am sure you will believe my next point. There are a few times in his quest where Count Emir talks about purpose. I only wish to be of service, to help those who fight for their purpose, he says, along with, I know the feeling, those with purpose are nothing if not ravenous, for power, for truth. Melina also speaks about purpose in her dialects. She shares that she is searching for her purpose, given to her by her mother at the roots of the earth tree, a purpose that was long lost. If we assume Melina is the Glomite Queen who was long ago defeated by Malekith, her rune sealed away, we can understand why her purpose was long lost. 
and if we agree on the possibility that the Gluomite Queen was an Empyrean, given the purpose by Metir, the mother of all two fingers, we can understand why she leads and supports us all the way to the throne of the Elden Lord. Why, although given a purpose to protect the Order above all, she acts on her own will and burns down the Earth Tree to ultimately protect the Greater Will's rule from Merica's selfish desire. If we look at the Glomite Queen only as a contender to Merica, some antagonist who leads an army clad in robes made from the skin of gods just to defeat her sworn enemy, it's hard to explain why she would be so against the fire of frenzy. But if you look at her as a protector of the world order, a higher being that's purpose was to manage the rights of death in the cycle of life, whose servants protect the messengers of the greater will, and even the mother of fingers herself, it would also explain why even though the Elden Ring, the collection of runes that describe the rules of the world, is stored inside the greater will's vessel, Glomite Queen had her own rune. Although I also kind of think that Merica stole a bunch of primordial runes from the ancient gods during her wars that made her earth tree the embodiment of order. Also, at the entrance to the Three Fingers Chamber, Melina mentions that life prevails and birth continue. But there is not one kid in the lands between. The birth of who exactly continues? As she sealed away the destined death, Merica ruined the cycle of life in these lands. But there is still a mother who keeps creating new life. A mother that Count Emir wishes to become. But you cannot fool the laws of the world so his only child was not given a true birth. Metir, however, is an alien creature, and her processes were not affected by the Order's corruption. Another cool detail is a very unusual demigod sarcophagus covered with fingerprints we can find in the area of the Cathedral of Manus Matter, one so different from the demigods resting in the wandering mausoleums, said to be Merica's unwanted children. Is this headless demigod a sign of Merica as well, or is he related to the previous vessels of the Greater Will? It seems the gods of all eras were ruthless when it came to their heirs, like the ancient dragons who created dragon communion to popularize hunting down their own undesired kin. The blasphemy of Mount Gelmir is also less of a mystery now. From the description of the bone bow, we learn that it was a medium for hexing rites of the tower. Hexing are any death rites in the era of gold. Rancor coal, rediscovered by necromancer Garris, was the spell of the servants of death, something that Queen Merica wished desperately to seal forever. After all, the Golden Order was created by confining destined death. Speaking of small details, the statue of the knight that can be seen decorating the most ancient buildings in the lands between now also is a part of Manus Matter's facade, and the amount of them definitely hints to the strongest connection to the warriors of the old eras that the astral past of these lands holds. The bird claw on Melina's eye that I previously took for a mark Malekith could have used to seal her abilities, I now perceive as a symbol of grave birds, the ancient golems created by someone to preserve the death rites. We know Malekith took one eye, but could the Glomite Queen, the one who brings destined death and is undeniably connected to the one who leads the dead, had sealed her eye to preserve her soul? Godslayer's sword reminds us of the tale of Metir, which is used as a staff of the great beyond. One channels the black flame that is used by the godskin apostles, another holds the microcosm once used to connect to the greater will. Also said microcosm sort of reminds me of the eye of the beast, which is the eye that Meliketh took away from the Glomite Queen. Torrent, the spectral steed that Melina lends us, has finally a tiny detail about him, the symbol of Torrent of Life engraved on Devonia's hammer, the longest serving knight of the Crucible who departed on the journey to search for the origins of Crucible. The symbol itself is once again the round abyss from which life sprouts like branches of the tree. Torrent symbolizes life, and allegedly the Glomite Queen symbolizes the death which is the inevitable end for all that leaves. Devonia's hammer helm also can be perceived as a hint to the civilization of the Forge, 
the forge itself being literally the crucible where all life used to melt together. I will once again throw in the details we had since the main game on the godskin robes, the symbols of Metir, the origin of alien life and furnace deity, the origin of all crucibles, life in all its forms in the lands between. The last two small details I wanted to mention before we move on to a bigger clue which is the village of Dominula, are the lampreys and their very eerie resemblance of godskin nobles. We know that godskins assimilated into human anatomy, and I find it super weird how lampreys are exercising all these facial emotions with their eyes, sort of like they're training to mimic humans. And last but not least, do you think that whatever is stuffed into the jars looks kind of skinned, while the pattern on the jars look similar to the monuments in the finger ruins. A curious place in the main game that we never knew too much about is the windmill village of Dominula, sharing architectural similarities with the villages of Queen Merica's homeland. Dominula is also adorned by bright blooming flower fields. Near the village we can find the protection of the earth tree incantation that tells us about the earth tree's beginnings. We do not know for sure if Dominula is the last place in the lands between where the original culture of Merica's homeland is preserved or if they are even truly connected, but the parallels such as flowery decorations, specific way of braiding the hair, fingerprint symbolism on the robes of Dominula's celebrants and the way Shaman village is on the border with finger runes? and their general obsession with human sacrifice are obvious. In Merica's youth, she lost her village to the rights of her own culture. Anyone who was deemed unworthy would be chopped and stuffed into the jars. But I guess it never really crosses your mind that the same thing you bring upon others could happen to you. By the way, if you want to know more about why I believe Merica comes from the same culture as the people who she ordered Mesmer to lead a crusade against, let me know in the comments. I would love to share what I found with y'all. We do not know if Merica was already an Empyrean when it happened, but we do know that afterwards she started her journey to force the new age, the rule of the earth tree, to defeat what she despised the most, death that took away her loved ones. The fate of one who sounds the hanging bell will be guided by the stars. This is the ideology of Count Timir. The one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death, says Melina before succumbing to fire in the Forge of the Giants. Perhaps the remains of ancient civilization of the Forge, the furnace's flame, burns away both body and soul, which is the complete death that Merica wanted to seal, the destined death of red color, color also found surrounding the grave of Caro, the most ancient of all gravekeepers, the blue and the red, the life and the death, which is the cycle of life. But all of those were just tiny details, as we are never told the full story, and as per usual it is up for your interpretation, and I wonder what yours is. If you watched till this point, please support this video with a like. It takes a lot of effort to make even the silliest of videos. And consider subscribing to discuss Elden Ring theories together. Thanks for being with me today and I hope to see you in my next video.